Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Sunday Night Breakdown. Daniel Routledge and Dave Forrester with you to go through all the action in the British Basketball League. I think this is our latest ever recording, Dave. Oh, well. We don't normally uh, we don't normally start this late. Let's see how we can get uh, get through any, everything. Only four games to do. Yeah. Uh, let's start off Friday night. Newcastle Eagles seventy five, London Lions one hundred six. Nawaba was back, so just um, Nelson missing for uh, London. I obviously watched this back, so I went into this uh, to watching this, uh, having seen all of the reaction on uh, on on twitter so i'm sure there's a few calls we'll pick up on as we go but i just wanted to and i'm sure this will be a theme running through the show as well look at the the officiating in general because i people were in my uh in my timeline calling it a disgrace and talking about the fouls and the free throws and all of that and obviously the newcastle game was way behind on the timings of our game um so it was obviously taking longer um but I went into it thinking, oh, gosh, wonder what this is. And then I watched you back. I have to say, though, I didn't have a massive problem. Were there some ticky-tack fouls that you could let go? Yes. Were there some extra ones that could have been called? Yes. So I didn't think the volume was out of kilter. Maybe in the fourth quarter there was one or two. If I was an Eagles fan, I might be a bit frustrated about it. But the, but the game was long, long since done at that point. You're shouting at clouds at that point. So I, I, I'm watching... In the sunshine in my back garden on Saturday morning, and and I didn't have too much problem. I also have the ability to skip forward through all the free throws as well. But I'm interested yeah. to see what it felt like in the gym, Dave. What what you what you thought? Ah, well, I, I have no. If anybody, if the first thing someone takes from that game is the refing, then they're miles out. Mm. So they're miles out. You know, it wasn't something. It was a it was a playoff game, which both teams were dialed up the physicality. Um, both teams are certainly Newcastle are stronger offensively than defensively in drawing contact. Hmm. London can do anything you want, basically, but if you want to get them into an arm wrestle, they'll go into an arm wrestle with hmm. you because they're comfortable, they're going to win it. And um, I thought fundamentally there was there was a lot of contact and there was a lot of fouls, but hmm. You know, that's what it was. I mean, you know, that, that in comparison... They, they are weeks... one and two. They are one and two in free throws, and yeah. they are one and two in fouls drawn. So it didn't... In three the, weeks... The, the number didn't seem out of kilter with the other five games that they played. Yeah, every game's different. And, you know, like three weeks ago, there was a, before the end of the regular season, there was a game which you didn't... Actually, on the, the international week, the game against Sheffield, which I twisted about. Hmm. Uh, it was horrible. It was 30 fouls called in the first quarter, and it was just... You know, despite the fact there was there was very little intensity to the game, if I can put it that way, it was a kind of an, an irritable type of game, and it was an irritable environment for the All Star game, I think, was it? Yeah, it's the All Star game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sorry. And I was, you know, really, I thought at that point, you know, I thought no one wanted to be there. I thought, oh, but the refs kind of made it. That game, I just thought that was just an, a team, two teams playing aggressive basketball, um, playing the way that they are. And um, the reality was the team that cracked, um, cracked and and um, lost their discipline. And it was nothing to do with the refs. Mm. Nothing to do with the refs at all. I mean, you, I mean, you know, the, the fact that in the first half, first half Newcastle missed like eight foul shots. Mm. The fact that they couldn't twice they couldn't secure a defensive rebound from a missed London foul shot. You know, these are the things that change the game. These are the things that win the game and lose the game. Um, and what happened was in the first half of this game, particularly in the first quarter, Ricky McGill went off. Mm. He played aggressively, looking for a shot, and they were London were in kind of drop coverage a little bit. They were they dropping off the, on the screen. They weren't kind of treating him as a knockdown shooter, which is kind of the way you play McGill because he might be over five, or he might be, you know, two of two or three of three. You never know. And, and he he might do that from one quarter to the next as well. From one quarter to the next, yeah. So yeah, you kind of he is kind of a slit that's. Let's not over sell out on him because he does have the ability to get to the rim, you know. So you want to see him make a couple first, and he did. And he came out and he was balling. He was making shots. He was he was he was playing like Trey Moore, just 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 every shot going, you know. And what happened was London noticeably, um, you know, it became more aggressive on the defense. They 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 on the screen. And Newcastle is basically all screen and roll at this point. That's it's all. That's what it is. Miguel Johnson, Austin occasionally. 
Um, and so they would, they, and when Sharma came in the game, he changed the game monumentally because he would come up higher on the ball screen and they would make McGill make a play by other than just standing there and shooting it. Mm. So they would take almost, they weren't over, they weren't doubling him, but they were basically saying to Ricky McGill, look, you want to make a play against whoever's guarding the ball. And they're, obviously they're rotating defenders, so it's not easy. And Josh Sharma coming up there, he, he's been challenged to kind of throw a pass just to one of the big guys who haven't really showed that they can finish, certainly the big guys off the bench. Mm. And that kind of got Newcastle a little bit antsy because the, the physicality kind of picked up. Um, and defensively, again, um, Newcastle struggled most of the game to take London away from what they needed to take away. And London were ready to play that game. You know, you know, there is three or four times London have been up in the last couple of years, and you do get the impression they're a little bit invigorated by the environment, mm. by by the by the arena, and you know, and and and, and the way it all is, and you know, they, they've you know really kind of stepped on Newcastle's throat three or four times, and um, I, I thought that Newcastle did okay to stay with them. But they were making some tough shots. Yeah. So Main McGill, shot. McGill, as you say, was hitting hitting shots. Newcastle, Defoe third foul early in the in the third quarter as well didn't help. And Newcastle scoring freely, but all they were doing really was was matching London. And actually, as I said, our game was a good five six minutes ahead of of that game. So we were watching uh, the yeah. first quarter. And I, I turned to Rob and said, Newcastle can't score one hundred and fifteen, and London are on pace for one hundred and fifteen here. So at some point. Something's yeah, yeah, got to change. Now. And, and and you know what? What I thought Sharma was the, the major guy in this game. Sharma was a backup centre, just obliterated Newcastle. I mean, he re he got cheap offensive rebounds. He changed he, because Newcastle's spacing is is suboptimal because they've kind of they're just kind of playing with their guards on the screen and roll and and at times Austin is under the basket crashing and putting his man in there and and then and neither Del Pesh or Defoe or a three point threat. So they don't really have a stretch five. That meant that Sharma could could basically if John John Johnson had the ball, then then Josh Sharma was like waiting under the basket for him. You know? And um he's just too big to too big for those guys to shoot over. And on top of that you've then got you've got kind of Jordan Taylor, Tariq Phillip and um Solowadi. Solowadi as well. You know the, the physical and the physical guards because Matt Moore got two fouls, so he wasn't really involved in the game much. Um, the physical guards who are who are you know who are really you know so so you know Johnson's got Solowade or Taylor or um or Philip in front of him, then he's got Sharma in the back line. You know it's just it's, those are the players that you can meet against BBL opposition, but when the the level goes up to ACB opposition or mm. Euro Cup opposition, it's a lot blooming harder. Yeah, and, and Newcastle didn't have the the um the, the spacing to kind of change that they played well off energy and then in the third quarter they just melted down they they just I don't say they quit but you know they all their all their frailties you know came to light the inability to create a good shot the, the inability to finish you know they were clearly psyched out a little bit you know by um um the size of London and um I didn't I didn't mention Noaba Noaba's a different level. Mm. No, no, are coming off the bench for the for a BBL team. It, it's just nuts, really. I mean, this guy's played 240 games in the NBA. He's still in shape, whereby he could play in the NBA. He's not kind of coming at the end of his career. That would, no. Have a cigarette. It's, not, it's not Lauren Meyer trying to get. Not Lauren bits, Meyer. Is it? Yeah. I mean, this guy is an absolute. He's an, you know, in, in the, the size and quickness that he had, uh, and the ability to finish around the rim and, and get to the rim, um, you know, an abundance of riches, you know, paid yeah. off. Indeed. You know, so um, so so Newcastle, yeah, they hung with them, but then they imploded, you know, in all their flaws. All you know, it's really frustrating. Sorry, it's very very frustrating. Two things frustrating for me because I've seen all the flaws all year, and they haven't necessarily really corrected them much. They haven't, you know, I see you see as I say, Green twice not getting a rebound on the, on the um miss foul shot. You see um, what about throwing the ball at the four on the halfway line? Mm. On a fast break, yeah, 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 yeah. running the other direction, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking, you know, the, you, you can't, you know, you cannot. You know, there were others as well, yeah, just kind of you know, knock, knock on wood plays. And against London, you Newcastle have to play a perfect game, probably a better than perfect game. And mm. Everybody has to play a perfect game. And unfortunately, there's too much of a the the the, the, the all the skills that they have, 
the, the flaws come to the fore too often, too quickly. And in the third quarter, they all came to the floor, all came at the same time. Yeah, it was a it was a fourteen uh, two start to the third quarter. So they were down seven at half time, forty nine fifty six, and then it was fifty one uh, seventy, and then coupled with all of the foul trouble that they were in as well, it just sort of disintegrated. Well, yeah, and, 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 and you know they, they gradually lost their heads. Green lost his head, McGill lost yeah. his head. Um, I, I thought I didn't like the fact that they stayed big. I didn't like the fact that you know they. That, that they thought that the best way of matching up with, with like Sharma and um, Grantham was was with Neighbour and Del Pesh. I just don't see that ever going to work. Yeah. You know, um, I'd like them to play small. I'd like them to kind of say to Sharma, okay, you guard Taj Green. Mm. You know, pull, pull them out, play five out, to give them something to think about. Because if you're matching those guys up, you know, body for body, then on what we've seen all season, it's a body of work. Then... The reality is that you know it's a wing and a prayer. If you hope, if you think that that lineup is going to, to do so, so I didn't think that they were brave enough with their lineups in relation to going small and just basically making it into a track meet and space in the court as best they could. And if we give up rebounds, we give up rebounds because they haven't been a tough interior defensive team all year without Defoe. And I didn't think they were going to start then. No. So that frustrated me a little bit. Um, but you know, again, it's probably deck chairs on the Titanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... But, London scored the first 18 points of the fourth quarter, and Miguel also, he 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 lost the handle. I couldn't tell if it was a foul or not that caused him to lost, lose the handle. He he seemed to think it was. He he fell down looking for one. He then jumps up in frustration and sort of jumps into Grantham, which was called for an unsportsmanlike, and he got a technical uh, for sarcastically clapping, I think it was, in the third quarter. So that, so he that had a couple of warnings before he got yeah. his technical. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a quick technical. You know, he was frustrated. He was frustrated, he was just frustrated. Yeah, he, he yeah, turned yeah. up to play that game. To be yeah. fair, he turned up to play. Um, yeah, they ended up with twenty and eight or something like that against a good team. He was ready to play in the playoffs. Um, but um, when they changed their defense and they adjusted, like you know, the high level teams do with all the bodies that they've got, and and you know, Bozic, you know, basically says we're going to not we're not going to let you beat us anymore. Mm. They didn't have a solution. And that's the reality. But they did not have a solution to that, and part of that was because the other guys are. Are, are um have not been reliable and consistent in what they do. They don't have a set kind of pattern to play when the ball gets in the past. It's been when the ball gets taken out. McGill sounds you give it to Johnson. Johnson makes a play. Johnson's struggling to make a play because of the size. London were really good. I mean, London are really good. They're the best yeah, yeah, best yeah. team. Of, they're better than last year's team. They're the best BBL team I can remember. Yeah. I'm not going to compare our our teams against them because I've I'm too involved in that. Um, but just on size, on skill, on level of um, cohesion, you know, they are really, really good. Um, and Newcastle are talented, but flaky. Mm, yeah. Uh, so Johnson, uh, sorry, McGill, uh, 20 points, 14 of them in the first quarter. Johnson, 19 points, 17 in the last 15 minutes when they were already down 19. And I think it was the 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 the, the book ending of that with the bit in the middle was the problem. Mm. Uh, and Delpesh, uh, 10. Uh, Nawaba, 19. Sharma, 18. Grantham, 17. Philip, 12. The top four scorers all came off the bench. And I think that's the other thing. Well, yeah, well, Newcastle, they haven't had a workable bench probably all the season. Part of that's been injury and then trying to get some of those guys, you know, eventually they had to go with Johnson off the bench just to give them something, you know. Um, but they, they've been running nine men. Spencer hasn't played for like three months and he's still yeah. sitting on the bench. So they've wasted an American spot there. They've kind of thrown neighbor into the fray and, he, and he's had, you know, the last two months and he's hardly scored a point. He hasn't shown um, that he's at the level which they need to be to be playing against London, and um, and Dalpesh has been very hit and miss, mm. you know. So outside of the three guards in, in Whitfield and and Ward Hibbert, occasionally that's probably the best I can say. Um, the bigs have really struggled. Green has been as I said, Green's all over the place. He's you know he runs the floor really well, times he plays with great energy, makes eye catching players. But there was a game, a play in the game today where Grantham dribbled past him for a dunk, you know, where he wasn't even in his stance on the perimeter, mm -hmm. you know, and he gets three fouls today in the game and, and, and gets a cheap technical, you know, and it's just, it's just too many, too many mental mistakes to play at that level.
uh, the three stats that I thought were most uh, uh, stark. Uh, points off turnovers, nine for Newcastle, 23 for London. Bench mm -hmm. points, 35 for Newcastle, 72 for London. And points in the paint, 24 for Newcastle, 68 for London. That's the thing, you know, it's a point, primarily the points in the paint because that is their game in transition and Johnson getting to the rim and, and Austin getting to the rim. Austin was a double nut in 22 minutes, just struggled with the size. Mm. You know, you, you know, you, the only way, I think, be in, the way Cheshire were able to beat them, and let's be fair, no one's beaten them since Cheshire and nobody's won the game of the league against them since before Christmas. But you have to space them as far out as you can and hope you're going to make enough shots. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and Newcastle did not space them, and they were they were kind of easy to guard. And it reminded me a little bit of the, the final we played at the O2, the first one at the O2, um, in 2015 when we won the sweep, where we were playing a London team that really had no spacing. You know, had Adadea, the one with the Nigerian guy they had. Oh, called, Olu. Uh, Olu, yeah, you know what I mean, Olu. Yeah, I can't remember his surname now. Um, Mikkel Stibbins, um, and Zaire, and a few other guys, but you know, Joey can win. And we were happy to, we were happy to kind of just pack the paint, mm. and, you know, and, and we didn't think they could make enough threes to beat us. Um, with the guys shooting it that we wanted to shoot it, you know, and they made a few in the first quarter. We took, and this took me, it took me down that, that kind of road because, um, London packed the paint, they're physical enough anyway, they don't really need to overpack it, you know, because. Not like they all need to crowd in when you've got a seven foot guy and a six foot nine guy, another six foot nine guy, and Grantham's a big guy too, you know. And Decker and Grantham and Morgan and all those guys and Noah and all the physical guards. Um, but they, they were still able to do that, and that just and then Newcastle's ball movement stopped. They weren't getting to the corners, they weren't getting their spacing, and, and against London, that's just death. Cheshire Phoenix 89, Sheffield Sharks 83, Shargwell back into the starters, still no cook, uh, for Sheffield. Um, Jack Rideau holding threes. They had a early six point lead, but but Sheffield seven in a row to 13 14. Yeah, Sheffield kind of thrown out kind of the, 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 the playbook, haven't they? Watching this game, I, that was my first thought. This was this was an old school BBL shootout. Mm. You know, I think at the end of the game, Sheffield had seven assists. Mm. You know, that's not Sheffield, that's no, not the way they've been for years, you know, and, and that's probably not far off an accurate number because. They were making a lot of plays, you know. They were in, you know, they've as they've gradually become kind of Nixon and Green's team. I think Green won the Player of the Year. He's only been there like three months. Mm. Um, they've become, you know, a lot more dependent on individual talent, which is fine because that's generally the way that the BBL goes. And particularly if you're signing people halfway through the season and asking them to kind of fit into a, a structure halfway through the season, and you know, you're going to lose them for two and a half months before you um before you get anything out of them. So it was kind of um, shackles off for them and, and go make plays. And the problem is that, that Cheshire are just slightly better than them at doing that. Yeah. You know, so it wasn't so much a contrast of styles. It was just two teams going at it. Um, but Cheshire have got a whole season of experience a bit behind them and are a little bit more confident in relation to winning. Whereas as to what their roles are, whereas Sheffield's still working through a bit and without playing without their centre, obviously. Mm. Uh, Chargois with a couple of threes in the second quarter, then White hit one. Nick's got out to a 40-29 lead. Uh, sort of slow start to the third quarter. It felt like those five, first five minutes were yeah, well. out of keeping of the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, but Nick's still in control, 52-38. And Sheffield then a 12-2 run, cut it to 54-50. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I can never, I still don't have a handle on, even now, I don't really have a handle on Sheffield because it's always difficult when a team is playing with four guards. Glasgow didn't play much in this game, but I rock Nixon and Ramsey um, because you don't quite know which of them is it is at the moment. And um, each of them are different and kind of set their tone, set their, their, their games differently. They've lost a little bit of their defensive emphasis. Um, but then you lose a six foot ten guy in the middle. That doesn't help either. Um, and Tasha got a little bit um, lax in relation to their shot selection. I thought as well, you know, and I thought that helped kind of Sheffield come back into it. The thing is, Sheffield got some really talented players. You know, it's not that they haven't been sleeping on them. 
it's just that the the kind of a committee team, and you've never quite known which ones it was going to be. Um, to, to get them over the hump, and you didn't know, you still didn't really know, even even though it's been nixed in the last few weeks. Uh, it's a three point game early fourth quarter, but as we've seen Cheshire do quite a few times uh, this season, nine two run back out to to double figures. It's a couple of threes, wasn't it? They made yeah, a couple, yeah. made a couple yeah. of threes, and and, and you know, and, and that's been their their mo with their threes or offensive rebounds and, and throw it back. Alternatively, Rye or Rideau take take kind of the reins and, and and kind of take control of it to make sure they get a good shot. They get, I'm sure, Cheshire get better shots than anybody else in the league, other than London. You know how they're going to get them, but stopping it's different. Mm. I think you can, but I don't think anyone's shown the capability. Uh, the the kind of wherewithal to make all the adjustments that you have to make and you've got to make a lot of them. Yeah. You've really got to be really on a scouting report. I heard that, you know, today a colleague said that, you know, it, it's rise impossible to stop. Rise virtually impossible to stop going left. I'm telling you now, you turn, you turn him right and his percentage drops substantially. He still makes some plays, yeah. but it's harder because he has so much balance and gift when he takes that dribble to his left. He can continue. He can jump stop. He can spin. He can jump to pass. He, he can he can euro step back on his right. He got the floor. That he's got everything. But when he's going to his right first, it's slightly different. And I still haven't seen teams because his spinning back is to his left, which is to his weaker hand, and he's some he's more kind of shooting the kind of the one handed floor, the one handed running hook or floor there, or just bullying his way by dropping his shoulder. Well, there that's something I'd live with, right? So you can go in Rado again, very, very hard to guard. But if you are disciplined in relation to doing it, and you're going to make him dribble left the whole game, and it's hard because he's coming off screens, all that stuff, then maybe you've got a chance. Um, and the rest of them, you, know, you can't leave their shooters. Mm. You know, and that's hard because you want to you want to be helping off on those guys. But it all comes down to the individual defense on Ryan Rado, and then the discipline of all the other guys not to over help when those guys make plays, because Ryan Rideau are excellent passes off the dribble, and they will find their guys in the corners. And they, and the reason they will find their guys in the corners is because they know they are there, because they are there every single time. White at the top, Jack in the corner, Stevens in the corner, um, Kristen in the corner. They are there every single time. It's repetition. which And, and because of that, their offense is predictable. Mm. But extreme, but NBA like, you know, very very efficient, you know, you know, rise obviously the Dartmouth grad. They've taken out. They don't shoot long twos. They shoot very few long twos. Mm. Very few. Rideau make met occasionally, but ultimately Rideau shooting shots after contact. Stevens has a pull up jump shot. Basically, nobody else shoots long twos. You know, and I, I don't think any team has managed to to figure them out, and um, Sheffield. We tried to shoot them out, I think, and didn't didn't really get close enough. And I never thought I knew the score when I watched this back, but I didn't see. I could see why they. Well, Rye got his his fourth foul and went to the bench. Sheffield had a thirteen two run to cut it to six with two to play. But as you say, yeah. never they never they never got close enough to put the pressure on. I did. I mean, it did raise my eyebrows when I was watching that. Why they took him out? I mean, in the playoffs, you got five minutes to go. You're up fifteen. You know, keep your guy in the game. What's the worst thing that happens if I was out in Europe 15? Well, the rest of the team's gonna have to win. Mm. Um, you know, they could have I think they could have put the game over a little bit earlier. Um but um, you know, at the end of the day they they they, they posted out, yeah. Yeah. Uh Rye 22 points, nine rebounds, six assists, two blocks. Rideau, 18 points, seven rebounds, six assists, three steals. Uh Kristen and Shagwa both 12. Uh, points they had 16 offensive rebounds and 16 second chance points. Nixon 20.7 rebounds. Idle Rock uh, 19 points, four of four field goals, 10 of 10 free throws. Uh, yeah, he played really well. I mean, you know, Rob was on your commentary with you. The ball fake, the ball fake, yeah, 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 you know, the up <laughs> fake. And he's right, you know, and he's right. And Ben Thomas, the coach, is, is you know, you know, you saw, and he's frustrated that they're falling for the up fake. So the scanner report is out there, and that's the flaw on Cheshire. Mm. That they're falling for that, that they're putting that they're putting RJ out of rock on the line for 10 foul shots because RJ out of rock, yeah, it's kind of a, a quarter of a first step, but he's not a guy who's going to blow past you. Mm. You know, he's not going to he's not going to be gone and you're fouling because he's too quick for you. 
He's going to be he's going to be getting foul because he's smart, he's canny, he's able to get into the seams of the defense, he's able to draw contact. A little bit like an NBA guy, you know, drawing looking to draw the contact. And you have to be more disciplined than that if you're Cheshire. Mm. And they weren't. So this is kind of what I say, you know, about everybody having little flaws in the in the, in their in the makeup. That frustrates coaches. Every yeah. all everything frustrates. You could coaches. see the frustration on Ben's face. It does, because yeah, yeah. you know that you know, if you're telling you guys stay down, it's not hard. Yeah. It shouldn't be hard. But um that's what separates out the you know the, the very best. You know, you can't be giving RG out around ten foul shots. Mm. Uh Dale Pesh nine points, ten rebounds. So let's come to today. Uh London Lions 94, Newcastle Eagles 81. Perfect start for Newcastle, 10 2 up inside the first few minutes. But yeah, to... played against a team that had beaten them by 31 and it started like they'd beaten them by 31. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, London were pretty, pretty slow. And Newcastle, as I say, Newcastle are kind of daft enough never to realize they haven't got a chance, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they're not going to ever, you know, Miguel and Austin, those guys, they're going to keep playing hard because that's what they, when I say hard, they're going to keep doing what they do, which is being, you know, being aggressive, getting cheap steals, whatever. Taj Green is probably, you know, is the, you know, is it's almost, it's almost like the, he almost reminds me of the goldfish swimming around the board, you know, who mm. kind of what happened 10 seconds ago is finished, you know, I'm going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 seconds that matters, you know. And so they're going to play like that. And, and, um, and yeah, to be fair, then they they came out and they 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 were impactful, you know. And they um and Mark right, he went to his three guard line it was a lot quicker, which I thought was the right move. With Kenny Ward Hibbert at the four and Defoe at the five, he played Darius all the way to like the two minute mark in the first quarter. And at that point, London only had thirteen points. Yeah, it was thirteen twelve. The Eagles had a little bit of foul trouble; they didn't distribute the fouls very well. No. Uh, but London seven turnovers. Uh, which led to eight Newcastle points, and uh, Bozic actually called two timeouts in the first quarter. You know? Yeah, he wasn't happy with he wasn't happy no, with wasn't the happy. focus. You could see he wasn't happy with the focus that they had, you know. And you know, I'll say Newcastle are not an untalented team, and they're quite. I think they're quite proud individuals. Um, so I don't think they were ever going to be trampled over the way that they were in the third quarter. And that in the third quarter on Friday came because of mental um, capitulation. Mm. A mental um, defenestration as opposed to physical, not because of the skill level. So you get to reset that, you get a reset before you go again. Um, and then, yeah, and, and, but again, Sharma came in made a difference in the game um, because you know, kind of Defoe was kind of able to body Olaseni a little bit, and Olaseni's not really at the same shot blocking effect that Sharma is. And Newcastle, they, they competed. That's all. That's probably the best I can say. They they competed. They again didn't get much out of their bench. Um, in fact, got very little out of their bench until John, apart from Johnson. Um, and and you know that's what I certainly think where they've got to look to upgrade. If you know, I think that they've 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 left some um shots out on the course. If you're a mm. about if you're a golfer, a golfer yeah. yeah, you know, I think they've left some shots out on the course or some points on the snooker table because. As I say, they're playing in America. They've got an American there who isn't playing. They've got, um, they don't really have a big who can make a decision other than Darius in relation to passing. Then they don't really throw him the ball that much anyway. And they don't really have point guards who are natural pass first guys. They don't have enough good passes, if I was being honest, to be a, to be a really high level team. Um, so it's finding kind of the balance with a slightly flawed roster. Um, London. But they could, but they do compete. Yeah, uh, John, Johnson hit a couple of threes in the second quarter, put Eagles thirty two thirty seven ahead. But but both he and Green picked up a third foul before half time. Green. Well, Green picked up three fouls in about thirty seconds. Mm. Bit a dumb foul on the baseline, but one you can live with. Then he um, thought he got fouled on the on the on the shot, and um, didn't get the call. So, you know, committed a, a, a kind of an immediate foul in the transition. And then got a super technical. Mm. You know, I mean, that, that's just, you know, that, so basically, not only have you lost momentum, you've cost your team a shot and you fouled yourself out the first off. Mm. You know, I mean, that's, it's, it, you can't do that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really frustrated for him. I'm frustrated for him as opposed to with him. Mm. He's 25 years of age. He has at times this year played 
you know, really, really impressive basketball. He is athletically, um, certainly up and down the court at different speed to any other four in the league in his ability to run the floor. Um, but and he shot 38 or 39 percent from the three point lane. So, I mean, what's not to like? You've got a guy yeah. who shoots 38 or 39 percent from the three point line who can run the floor like a gazelle, dunk and block shots. Well, what's not to like is him getting fouls, get, getting stuff like that going on. What's not to like is at the end of the third quarter, Dante Grant and taking one look at him on the perimeter and taking one dribble to his left and dunking and Taj mm. being in the picture because he hasn't even gotten to a stance to guard him. Mm. Because it's, because it's, 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 you know he's not mentally into playing defense at that point, yeah. um, so I'm you know really frustrated for me. He's, he is the ultimate example of a of at the moment potential over over product, yeah. um, and it's not helped. And, and to be honest, it's not been helped this year by um, by our rebound, and you know and I, I put Ted Allen in this category as well. You know that the hype, and there's probably a couple of others. Um, the hype that people are getting um, is not necessarily in proportion with their impact on winning. Hmm. You know, you no, know, and then and that. I mean, for yeah, okay, you get a dunk, you get that, you get that, and the other. But in the NBA, you get the hype because you win. Hmm. Or Anthony Edwards gets the hype not because he just dunks on somebody. But ultimately, because either you win or you're that good that everybody knows you're going to win soon, like when Banyama and people like that, you know. Here we get we we get excited. We're getting excited over a play or a highlight and all that stuff. But you miss the other, you know, the, the three or four other, you know, bonehead things. That's not just Taj Green, and it's not just Teddy Allen or shooting one bad shot too many or, or all those guys. There are, there's, there's plenty of it gone on, mm. and and so um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exciting basketball and winning basketball aren't necessarily the same thing. And I am beginning to sound. You like, are sounding yeah. like a grumpy old man. Yeah. Uh, I'll get you some cue money from the office. And, well, be uh, I'm entirely correct. The uh, uh, mid third quarter, there is uh, nine unanswered points to London to uh, fifty-eight, fifty-one. Uh, Eagles then tied the score at 61 around the final break. London with eight in a row, to 69, 61. I thought the the breaker play. If you like, seven minutes to go. McGill had a three-point shot, yeah. rim yeah. in and out. Yeah. London run the other way. Matt Morgan hits a three, and it could have been a four-point game if uh, McGill's yeah, shot he, goes in yeah, instead of ten. Yeah, that's right. But you know, Ward Hibbert got caught up on the cross match with Morgan, and he just died on the screen. Mm. He absolutely died on the screen. I don't know if he was tired or whatever, and, and he gave Matt Morgan basically a layup, which a three, a three-point shot for him wide open on the screen. Um, I don't know who was in the game, and you know it's semi-transition, so it is a little bit difficult. And Ricky McGill didn't have his didn't have his shooting game going. And the problem is for Newcastle, everybody had to, to beat Newcastle to come close. Everybody had to have their best game at the same time, yeah. and that probably didn't happen in either game. You know, McGill went off on Monday. Johnson played Johnson on Friday. Johnson scored the ball well today, but they didn't match. They didn't mesh, and then kind of. The, the the bigs, you know, that's it. They, they didn't get, they weren't able to get anything back to the basket. It was or, the, or anything through their bigs. There's one play I think they threw the ball to, to Darius at the top, and he threw it to Taj Green for a dunk. He cut for a cutting Taj Green for a dunk, and the ball movement just you know hasn't been there. The spacing hasn't been there. They've been playing off individual talent and athleticism and will, and that only gets you so far against a team like London. Mm -hmm. So it was. Um, I was surprised Newcastle kept the whole team in at the end. I don't know whether, but, you know, playing um, those guys when you're down 20, I didn't see the point in that. Um, but, you know, I think the one thing I will say is that London you know, basically played the nine players and then in both games, you know, you got a bit of Queely and Sandy at the end. Mm. You know, so this isn't the London team that's been playing the regular season. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is, you know, they're a bit of Queely and Sandy at the end. That's without Luke Nelson. They are still, uh, they are still the, Mega talented, big, solid, and together professional team. You know all their errors, kind of all the, all the the flaws that the kind of the other guys in the British Basketball League have, which is why they're here. That doesn't apply to London. No, no. Uh, Nawaba, eighteen points, seven of eight shooting, six rebounds, plus twenty five. He was unguardable both legs. I mean, they didn't come close, and, and the problem it was kind of a problem because you're guarding everybody else. 
you know, and he's slashing the basket. He's half a step, and you know, he you know, he scored those points in in both legs. I don't think they ran a play for him. Maybe they did, but I don't remember if they did. You know, just made plays, just an NBA player. You know, Matt Morgan, eighteen points, five assists. Philip, uh, eleven points, five assists, forty-seven bench points, sixty points in the paint. Yeah. Uh, Johnson, six of ten for three, twenty-three points. Austin, uh, nineteen point six rebounds. McGill. Uh, 14 points and seven assists. Uh, and finally, Sheffield Sharks 73, Cheshire Phoenix 92. And before we do this, our venerable production assistant, whilst I was waiting for you to log on, sent me a text message to say, read this uh, before you go on to SNB. And he'd sent me a link to the Yorkshire Post, buy a paper people. Uh, and pointing me in the direction of a quote. So I'm going to read the quotes from uh, Atiba Lyons after the game before we get into uh, yeah. everything that went through, which was, this is a direct quote. We can't let emotions affect the team, and unfortunately we let that happen tonight. Absolutely, I'd like to take it back. It was inexcusable. I've got to make sure I'm giving myself the best chance to lead these guys, and I don't do that, so it's on nobody else but myself. It's unfortunate how it's ended, the guys had an unfair shake a little bit, but we've got to do a better job of not rising it to it like we did. Refereeing in this league is not always consistent, and I've got to make sure nothing affects the team. And tonight, I think emotions are high. So I just thought that was worth reading out loud before we go into everything. I that read that as well, and I also watched the first 15 minutes of the game back. Mm. Um, just to make sure I was sure. Um, I don't even think they got an unfair shake. I think it was just, I think that there was two calls which both came quite close together, which I understood that a little bit, I would have had a little bit of an issue with. The one was on when they're in the penalty when Rideau comes down the court and kind of rounds, he gets called for a bump and he's basically just standing. That's what Rideau does the whole game, which that didn't need to be called. And he gave him two shots and that was the first, that was the first technical. And then there was, you know, there were a couple of no calls at the other end, but nothing egregious. And then there was the Skylar White one, which you, you know, you got the angle on. Mm. The block, did you get the block? Did you get the wrist? Well, from the baseline, it looked like you got a block. Mm. On the other one, maybe you got a bit of a wrist. Maybe you could have called a foul. Um, but um, and, and it's, it's all about, you know, well, look at the foul shot. It was twenty three two on foul shots at the half time. Yeah, but the time that um, that foul on Rams on them. Um, Rideau was called, the foul shots were six to zero mm. or seven to zero. And Sheffield had not, Sheffield really, I didn't see a foul. I was looking. I didn't see a foul which would get them shots, maybe a couple of semi bumps, but there was one where Kipper Nichols had some up with a hand on but he made a running hook shot anyway. Mm. He could call that, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't be, you know, whatever. And, um, and even in relation to um, Cheshire's foul shots, um, it was Aaron Rye going twice to the basket. It was Maceo Jack in the first quarter shooting a little kind of his little running shot and RJ out of rackets him on the elbow, clear as day, and immediately does the what? Mm -hmm. You know, you watch it back, he clearly hit him on the elbow, you know, as he shot, he's just slapped down on the elbow. And um and then the technical, and the technical was the seventh, the seventh foul shot. Mm -hmm. Now after that, he managed to um have Del Pesh foul Skylar White on a three, which is about the clearest foul you can imagine. Um, they call a timeout. They're still upset at that point with the ref for the previous no call on Skylar White, I think. And um, so he makes those shots. Um, and then you get end up with a bench technical. Um, we, we don't know precisely who got the bench technical, but someone's got a bench, someone's got a technical sat on the bench. Yeah. At this point, you know, just like Newcastle did in the third quarter on Friday night, at this point they're unraveling. Mm. You know, and, and you know, and, and as a group, and what happens is, um, they, they come back and um, there's a couple of kind of no calls at the at the Sheffield end in front of Atiba, which at this, which if you've got yourself into that kind of mindset, which is they're out to get us, mm. would kind of tip you over the edge. And I understand he got the second one for a bit of sarcasm or something like that from a thing said in the said in the report, um. You know, sarcastic clapping or sarcastic. I don't know. It says it says so in the Yorkshire report, the Yorkshire Post report. What you got it for? Um, and you don't do that with Ed Udansky. Mm. You know, 
Uh, but I, what I will say is that you know the first fifty, you know the first fifteen minutes, uh, I, I thought of anything. Cheshire got kind of a little bit of a rush shape. There was a, a ball knocked out of bounds early, which was knocked out by um, Ramsey, and and Sheffield got the ball. Um, there were a couple of um, there's a Rideau, the first foul of the game is a call where Rideau was called for a block, which was you know pretty much just kind of stood there. Um, and I just thought he just up and up. So what then happens is because they lose their they have five technicals in that quarter, they lose their rag. They end up getting um in the penalty. Then they lose commit a couple more fouls. So the foul shots continue. Yeah, yeah. Twenty three two at half time, yeah. but it was only about a four minute period when the game was going against them when Shesha were getting into a rhythm. Um, that kind of the 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 roof blew off. And he's right. To be fair, we're one hundred percent right. Insofar as you know, you you can't let that happen in a playoff game, and it's not it's so much even losing the coach because Marco can be a coach and can do it, but it's the the mindset of the team as a result. Well, it's the emotion of it all, isn't it? Because it gets it, it gets everybody it. up. Cheshire yeah. are thinking, oh, Cheshire are smelling blood. Yeah, so, that, so they're going for it, and then you get the, you know the 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 teas that ended up on. Uh, Nixon and and, and Idle Rock are it's almost like because it's spinning out of control. Well, it is, yeah, and it takes you know, and, and at that point, you know, you've got you know, you've got to have your what is it? If you can keep your head when all around you are losing, mm -hmm. yes, you know, and unfortunately, that's his job. That's the head coach's job primarily. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's right in what he said. It's good that he said it. Mm -hmm. Um, because it, you know, it's something he can get better at because it's probably. Three or four. It certainly happened, you know, three or four weeks ago in the but but it's it, it Sheffield as well. So this might be the third or fourth time this year, um, that he's that, that he's got himself thrown out, um, on stuff whereby you know. You need to just take a minute and sit back on the bench. When the emotions are really high, you know, you've had you've had your say, you know, Pat Nostro is quite good at this. He has his say doesn't generally get a second one and then goes and sits down sometimes mouths and stuff but goes and sits down so you're not right in the middle of the fray mm. as the next call is coming because the next call can be the one that tips you over the edge if you know what i mean yeah so you know i, th I think kind of having your say and then just kind of taking two minutes just to gather yourself and to gather your team because it doesn't because basketball players rarely play better when they're emotional like that and it's great in the environment, you know, creates everybody hates the refs, so everybody's blaming the refs, everyone's got a boogie man to, to go out in the gym, so the fans are up and shouting and all this stuff. But it's if I'm Cheshire, I'm thinking, yeah, keep going. Mm. You know, you know, keep going because at the moment you're digging kind of your own hole. So he said it, which is right. And he, he you know, he's took he's he, that's impressive, but he's took kind of responsibility and said, Yeah, look, I can't this can't happen. Um I get the impression though that I don't think Sheffield were winning that game. No, no, I didn't. No, I, you know, I, the I, other thing is, we we talked. It, it obviously, as it all unraveled, Cheshire moved well clear. Um, yeah. We we talked about the seventeen points extra that they got from the free throw line, and you yeah. sort of talked about. But actually, it was also they were zero for ten from three at half time, Sheffield, and Sheffield, yeah, I, can't, they, they, I can't remember what Cheshire was were, but I think it was seven or eight threes at half time. Okay, well, Kristen made some threes, and, and and to be fair, at Cheshire, you know, they they kind of adjusted in this game, and, and you know, the one thing that's really kind of stood out over the past two games has been Charles passing. Mm. Um, because and Holden's passing. So what Cheshire will do is if things are a bit, uh, particularly with their bench group, if things are a bit stagnant, they'll get the ball to Holden in the post and charge around the post and they'll space the court. And three or four times, basically, the corner defender for Sheffield, the guy who's meant to defend in the far corner, is basically sagged under the basket and is, 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 not, is kind of a soft double team. Mm. And they were really good at flinging it to the far corner and they got three or four open threes that way. Yeah. And that they're the shots that they make. And I don't think Sheffield adjusted that very well. Basically, if Charger are going to beat you in the post for a contested two-point shot, you'll live with it. If Holden's going to beat you in the post, you'll live with it. What you can't do is is kind of cheat off the corner. And that corner guy, the corner defender would normally be you know in the lane for a screen and roll on the other side because he's kind of trying to... Um, make sure the big guy doesn't get a free run and bumping him and that type of stuff, and then recovering out. But when the ball goes in the post, 
you know, you got knocked down shooters over there. You just, you know, Kristen, when he's made a couple, Jack, Steve, you just can't come off them. And Charles Ross passing really, really impressed me. Holden is a pass first guy. You know, Holden can sling it to any part of the court. And, you know, with Holden, the knock on him is can he shoot the ball well enough to make you go over a screen, basically. Um, but I like Josh. I like, I like I like the way they played today. I hope they played under control. Mm. You know, and by the, they were the guys who kept their heads while Sheffield were losing theirs. Um, and you know, these the end of the season does funny things. You know, it's the last game as the emotions are heightened. There's funny things to everybody. Um, it takes you know, it's and generally the teams that are most hardened are the ones that, you know, by definition, the things that are the most hardened are the things that don't crack. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. Newcastle cracked on Friday night, and Sheffield cracked on um on Sunday afternoon. Mm. And that's it, you know. It's and it's sport, and I, I say we've been there, I've been there, you know. It's um, you know, we've, I've been there at times when we've caused the team a crack, and when we've cracked ourselves, mm. uh, and you know, and it, it's almost a tangible thing. You know, it's happening, um, but it's not built on what happens on that day. It's built on the amount of repetitions, the amount of mistakes that you've made over the season, repeating the mistakes, failing to correct what you've done over the season. It's a build-up of nine months or uh, of stuff, you know, of emotion, of whatever. And ultimately, the team that's more certain in themselves, in their own mind, um, is the one that prevails, and they prevail. Cheshire, I mean, to be fair, London and Cheshire have been by far away the best two teams in the league since Christmas. Mm. Um, you know, before Christmas, it's all a bit, you know, kind of everybody's jostling for position. But since Christmas... Um, they have crystallised everything that they've been doing. London with the benefit, Cheshire probably more creditably because Cheshire have done it without adding anybody. Mm. Um, London had you know get to add Nwaba halfway through, you know, right? Okay, good. Look, everybody else, um, you know, for that extra bit of talent, um, but you know, but they've got to the point whereby, um, you know, they, they thoroughly deserve to, to to be in the final. To be honest. Uh, Second up with a non-event. So yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose the only thing was Nixon got an unsportsmanlike foul yeah. went into Wolf, and he'd have got a t he was one of the tees in the first half. So he yeah, I wasn't sure. I thought he was a little bit unlucky. I think, I think what you saw from the baseline camera, and I think what the ref saw from side on was Nixon hitting him with a forearm, as opposed to kind of running into him like he would just run into somebody if he were running them up because he didn't know they were there. Mm. I think the ref, the ref. It is 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 determined that um, some in, some intent was used. Mm. I'm not sure if it was the forearm came out first or if he had the contact first and then as a reaction, his forearm came out almost to balance himself. Um, so I thought, uh, yeah, I thought it was a little bit unfortunate because he didn't. When you looked at the back the back camera, it didn't look that he looked up and seen him. No, and that's only that's only an sports night foul if he's seen him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's seen him and he's leveling him, that's non sports like foul, no question. Mm. If he decide I'm going to run through you and I'm going to throw a forearm to do it to the sort yeah, of, yeah, yeah. it's non sports like. But it, I don't think he did. So I think he was a bit unfortunate. I mean, I it's, it's was relatively inconsequential. But I can kind of see when you, you do see his arm come out mm. on the camera. But I, I, I don't think it was. I don't think, it, I think that was just a reaction to what, to the contact. Uh, Green 17 points, 14 rebounds, Delpesh 12 points, 10 rebounds, Pipkins 11. Uh, three of 18 for three, they finished in 12 yeah. of 17 from free throw line. Uh, Jack 20.6 rebounds, Rideau 19.6 rebounds, four assists, Rye 17.6 rebounds, eight assists, 14 of 37 from three, and 20 of 27 from free throw. So only eight points difference on the uh free throws, but 33 points difference. On the three point shooting, honestly, I went back. I went back and I watched every foul. I watched every no call in the first fifteen minutes, and you know, I had to say, up other than the 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 the, the slightly cheap call on on Ramsey, and the potential no call on White, and there's a couple of other kind of little no calls around there. Cheshire didn't foul. Mm. You know, they they played straight up. They played. They put their hands up. They they defended really well. They have a bit of length on them. And um, and Sheffield are, Sheffield are, um, are more of a jump shooting team now than they have been all season. Mm. Take you out without Coke in the post to throw the ball to. Um, you know Green is stepping outside, but they kind of defended him with bodies. They didn't defend him one on one. They threw extra bodies into the paint. 
you know, and um, so yeah, so I, I just think, yeah, ultimately playoffs do funny things. And more, it was good that it was a second leg, though. Um, that was a, it was a zero zero game, we weren't worrying about points difference of both the games, made them be made them basically watchable. Mm. And no one's got to worry about third legs being at silly times, no, true. So in fact, they planned it right all along, yeah. So it would have been on Tuesday because the, the, the other yeah. one did get moved. Congratulations to um, the planners and all the, all the whinging we did previously is entirely null and void. And in, indeed, indeed it is. Um, so, one more game to play. London against Cheshire. London will obviously be favourites. Can can Cheshire do it again, do you think? Depends when um, London's paycheck stop, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, sorry, you didn't think I was going to go the whole, <laughs> the whole show without mentioning that this is not looking at that things have taken a turn for the decidedly worse with, mm. with potential administ- well, not administrators, but re- business restructures called into 777 partners. I mean, if that isn't a euphemism for everybody who holds on to their hats, I'm not mm. sure what. Um, but we'll leave that be for now. That's all, you know, that's just, yeah, we always say. Um, Cheshire are the only team who have shot. Because they space the court so well and they have good size at the wing. Um and a point guard who is, you know, competitive as hell and has a chip on his shoulder in relation to not no doubt not being the MVP because he won't be the MVP because he wasn't in the team of the year. Yeah. Well, um, the, the voting for MVP and voting for team of the year are different. So well, if he was the MVP, MVP, having not been in the team of the year, then the yeah. whole thing is yeah. still needs to be abandoned and mm-hmm. whoever designed it needs to be taken out the back of the the shed and you know, burnt with. Hot I, I, I suspect I suspect how the votes go won't be any different, but they, yeah, exactly. they are technically two different. Yeah, votes. right. Um. So yeah. So so they they you know they have. You know, with it being Cheshire, it is likely you know it is likely it'll be the it'll be it'll certainly be the last time that entire team plays together. Mm. Maybe it'll be the last time many of them play for Cheshire because Cheshire generally is a feeder. Club their point, get their guards going to better things. You know, some of the guards they've had, they've recruited really well. And obviously, when you win as much as they have, and everybody wants more money, you can't pay everybody more money. So I think you know the the fun thing about it is that it's a it's a repeat of the trophy final, and London got embarrassed. Mm. Um, and they should be embarrassed by the way that they were in that game. Um, which means that I actually think it might just come down to a little bit to 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 emotion and um. The only way that I can see Cheshire winning is if, if London kind of succumbed to an overwhelming kind of emotion. You know, if they lose, they crash. Yeah, 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 they yeah. overhype. Um, I do think, you know, in fact, I mean, I know Noaba played in that trophy final, but he was new. Mm. He was a weekend. He didn't play the semi final. He did play the final, if you remember. Decker yeah. wasn't around then, was he? Decker wasn't playing. I don't no, know. No, no. Um, you know, Noava and Decker kind of do change the the the, the um calculus a little bit. Um, but you know, you Cheshire have a puncher's chance. It's probably not a great puncher's chance, but they have a puncher's chance because they do have the physicality to get under the skin of London. They've beaten them already. They will not take a backward step, mm. and you know they can make it to the threes. Yeah, yeah. And if they, yeah, yeah, you know, so they can. I would, I would agree. I would agree. I would say, uh, Cheshire have a very small chance, but that is still a chance, which is, I wouldn't give anybody else a chance. I agree with that. I mean, even even today, even Newcastle tied at the half, he didn't really give them a chance. No, no. Um, so I would agree with that. And it's a one off game and it's a final. Um, but you know, I struggle to see. That London team losing to the same team in two finals this year, mm, yeah. So that 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 would be, you know, without kind of anything else going on in the background, you know, that would be, you know, well, that would be a cataclysmic failure. I think. If I think. Yeah, I think it would be a cataclysmic and and, and expensive failure, if I may say. Mm. Um. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Um. Uh, look, Cheshire have had an unbelievable year. I mean, yeah, ultimately, yeah, yeah. in reality, they are, um, you know, if it wasn't for London, and obviously it's easy to say it wasn't for London, but basically if it wasn't for 777 and their wish to put together a Euro Cup team. Mm. And if it wasn't for the restructuring of the league, you know, we could be talking about, you know, a jet wash. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you know, we won your three trophies instead of four. Mm. Um, London won the league, Cheshire won the trophy. Um, obviously, the, the, the cup would have been up to win. Mm. If London weren't London, then you would have to say um, that Cheshire would have every chance of winning everything they competed in. Mm. The way they played. Now, that's phenomenal. Whichever way you look at it, and it's a triumph of it's a triumph of recruiting. I think that obviously the the primary recruitment was getting a you know a British player who's potentially the the best player in the league outside of London, mm. and then and and one of the smartest, to be frank, you know, and 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 to, and to have every and then to recruit all the guys to buy into that role to play around him, mm. and to come up with a diamond in the rough in Rideau who's played in Luxembourg and Ecuador and you know and all sorts of places. We played the first, and if you go back to the first week of the, the first week when they beat Leicester, yes, so. this guy's out of shape. He can't Good. jump. You know, he ain't going to last. Yeah, and, and he's shooting twenty percent from three at Christmas. Uh, I think. Yeah, and then ten, you know, in the foul line, thirty percent. And you think this is you know, ultimately, and um, what, how they plugged him in mm. to uh, to whatever kind of you know electric car PowerPoint they mm. plugged into to, to juice him up. Yeah, to get you know to get and to a certain degree, Pete Parker Jackson Corrett was the same when he went to Cheshire. He started yeah, yeah. off, and you know, by the time COVID came, he was he was on a trajectory to the Euro League. Yeah, 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 you know. So, um, so they've got a habit of it. You know, even some of the other guys just signed. Um, the guy, the point guard who's whose name forgets me, who's been playing in Finland. Um, oh, Ross Caron Ross. Mm. He, he 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 was really good as well. You know, so they've just done a great. They've just done a great job this year. All of them. You got to give them a hundred. You got to give them a ton of credit. And they've demonstrated that they're by far the second best team. Um, and they've got a bunch of chance of being the best team. So it'll be, it will be, and, and then everybody else goes to the off season, and we see what happens in the off season. Yeah. Because yeah, as yeah. I say, all the players, you know, all the players are on one year deals. So all the players yeah. holding their hands out and working out what they can get and where. And the the the, the, site, the the reality of being a mid level league in Europe is that it's a leg up, mm. so everybody's looking to get themselves into a better situation, and with better exposure and better money, mm. just like you or I would. Yeah, indeed. you know, um, and that's without even getting into whatever is going to happen with the league and and the and the and the finances and the whole thing. That's um. You imagine going to get interesting fairly quickly. Yeah, I would imagine it will. Yes. Indeed. Yeah, he says diplomatically. <laughs> it doesn't fit my memo, does it? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was ten in the Sunday. Sorry, yeah. that's a bit, a bit of a tall, but I think that's about fair. Yeah. So one more game to go. Uh, two, two probably. Two, we'll, we'll, because we'll, no, we'll two because I'm going to give a shout out to. Um, oh wait, wait, wait! I saw the I saw it go to overtime. But I left the office. Who won? Um, two seconds to go. Chloe Gainer knocked down two foul shots. Eagles won by two. Oh wow! Amazing, amazing. Uh, tie game with uh, ten seconds to go. Um, Lake and James shoots an air ball. Chloe Gain gets a rebound. Ref calls a reach in foul on the um on the defensive rebound. Yeah. Um, as the ball went out of bounds, looks like it kind of got on the arm and yeah. Walked down the court, knocked down two foul shots. Incredible, and, um, incredible. It just because they had no, I mean, they were playing without an American, they're playing American down. Um, Katie Nolan's injured, and then um, they beat Sheffield last week and they beat yeah, yeah. this week, which is just an awesome accomplishment and you know, a really encouraging thing for you know, for girls' basketball. And the biggest thing, and I'm going to just shout it out because I should, I've got the platform, so why not? Is that, um, you know, there are three players there and um, we've been there a while, Chloe Gain and Marina Fernandez and um Zoe Willis. And they're all coaching boys teams in the Newcastle Academy. Mm. Sorry, Marina's coaching girls team. Um Zoe, I think Zoe and Chloe are coaching boys teams. Chloe's been coaching the 16s team, mm. you know, and are doing an awesome job. Mm. You know, and having that, you know, kind of um gender free connection between you know girls co- girls sorry ladies coaching boys mm. doesn't happen much in this country mm. and it should and, and um for, for glory just to kind of wander down there and if you knock them down like basically nobody cared you know like it was just two shots in the gym mm. um was awesome for the not for the commitment that they put in on the court because i know i know them so i'm biased and i'm sure the caledonia girls do exactly the same so it's it's much much, but um, not the commitment on the court, but the commitment that they do off the court. They're employed by the Community Foundation, the Eagles Community Foundation, 
and um, providing inspiration for you know for young girls to play and um so i'm absolutely made up for them mm. and um and i hope um london have a couple more signed by the wmba next before they go before they play next. <laughs> It was gone, yeah. We I mean, a couple of them gone, haven't they? Gustafson's gone, yeah, yeah. Stanley's gone. Still a pretty good team left. Still a pretty still good team. How many did, what, was score, what was the score against Leicester? I think, I think they won by 25. Aye, okay. Yeah, yeah, good look, yeah, good. Yeah. But I have to say, the other thing I liked about the game, I watched it back, is that it was the best game of the three this afternoon by, by a long way. Um, was that it was old school. It was like old, it was like it was like old school Eagles. It was like you're gonna win with your defense, it's 54 all after regular time, yeah, yeah. 60 58 at the end. Um, nobody could make a shot. You know, yeah. and um, in fact, people missed, missed obvious shots, but you could see both teams were really kind of, yeah, in, yeah. um, and um, it's always nice to break a couple of Scottish hearts. Yeah, yeah. No, what we put the last minute on because we come out of our game. It was a minute to go, and it was a two point game or something. So we watched, and then it went to overtime. I was like, I got Sunday night breakdown to record. I'm gonna have to leave. I yeah, they, they got a double time on a missed shot and an offensive rebound with like yeah, one. Yeah. To go. So was, you know, you think that's probably the end. You think that Cavs are gonna go. Away. But no, it was a great game, and I just I hope uh, it's gonna be tough in Newcastle because they're gonna struggle to score against um against London next week. I think, but the, the togetherness that they've shown the last few weeks, yeah. um, it might you know they're gonna compete. I think if nothing else. Yeah. So cool. Two games. So two games next week, and Dave and I will be back to break them all down once again for the final time this season. But for now, goodbye.